This is Biff from Saxon. You're watching Dave Bane on the front row. Yeah. another episode of the front row I'm here again with Mike Rocco you may remember him from last year he was here uh, promoting his band Cinder Road and now he's got a new project he'd like to uh, come back and talk to us about welcome back Mike how you doing I'm good it's good been a while you, man. man yeah it has been um, the one thing I noticed right off the top is you've copied my hairstyle I did the last time I saw you started uh, highlighting your hair I did I <laughs> highlighted the hair cut a little bit on next thing I'm, I'm working on the what do you call it? Is it like it's just the big old biker goatee? It's, it's called 50 pounds. All right. Well, I'll work, I'll work on, on that, that too. <laughs> Cheers. <laughs> well, Mike, we're not here to talk about how I'm fat. We're here to talk about your new single. Too Late. Which I have already purchased, and you can find it on the iTunes. And I guess you remembered how much I love having hard copies of things. Yes. So you brought us some copies here. So where else can we find your single right now? The single is available on iTunes. You just search under my name, Mike Rocco, uh, M-I-K-E-R-U-O-C-C-O. -C -C and uh, you can get it on my website, which is MikeRocco.com. Uh, Amazon, all, all the digital outlets it's on now. Anytime we play a show, I'm going to have CDs. And uh, yeah, it, it's, it's currently at radio, Hot AC Radio right now. So call your local radio station and request it. And, and that's one of the things we were talking about while we were off camera is um, you're doing kind of like a little mini tour right now. Tell us a little bit about that. What are you doing? Well, we just put Too Late out to radio uh, about a month ago. So we've started doing radio promo tours, which is basically where uh, my band and I go out and we play acoustic uh, for you know VIP uh, station winners and station staff and stuff like that. So uh, we played in Baltimore today at Mix 106.5. Tomorrow we play at... Uh, uh, WIAD, Fresh 94.7 in DC. Um, for the middle of May, we're going to be in the Midwest doing a, a run uh, through there. And then in June, we're going to do a two week run on the West Coast, basically introducing radio and, and the listeners of those stations to um, my new project, which is my, my solo band, just under my name, and uh, the new song, and hoping to get a bunch of ads and make a big old hit out of this thing. And this is just the single. We're going to get a full album soon, right? Yeah, the album, The Rise, The Ride, The Risk, is going to be out June 12th uh, on iTunes and through my website. And uh, the single, Too Late, is out now. So pick up the single while it's out, and uh, the record will be along shortly. And if you're a fan of uh, Cinder Rhodes' work, um, I don't know if you like me comparing things to things, but I told you this, is, this kind of reminded me of a little bit of, uh, of It Hurts. Yeah, you know, I mean, for, for years... Um, it's kind of your softer side, not yeah. your rocker side. Well, you know, the, it, it's not my drop-tuned, you know, leather yeah. jacket side. It's more my fitted military jacket side. <laughs> yeah, I noticed that. You don't have the leather jacket with you this time. I have it in the car. <laughs> I spilled something on it on the way here, so... Okay. But, uh, no, I, uh, I've always, you know, been the primary songwriter for, for both Plunge and Cinderella and obviously the solo band, so... Um, I welcome the comparisons and, you know, obviously I, I, you know, I wrote the songs in Plunge and Cinder Road, so um, both those bands are going to sound very similar to, to uh, my solo record, with the exception of, you know, obviously, you know, some time has passed and I'm a little older and, uh, you know, the music has, you know, I guess they use this term a lot in, in, in you know, press, but it's matured a little bit. But, uh, I definitely could hear that in, in the sound. Yeah, it, it hasn't lost its edge, I wouldn't say. No, not There's, at all. It's, it's still, without a doubt, a rock band that I'm in, but a little more, uh, you know, pop friendly. The thing is, you know, if a band like, or if an artist like, you know, Mellencamp or Tom Petty or Brian Adams were to come out today, where, where would they be played if they were a brand new artist? And that was a question I kind of had to ask myself. and I. I think it would be at Hot AC Radio, you know, the mix stations of, of whatever your town is. The one that's going to play the Goo Goo Dolls and Lifehouse and Daughtry, but then they're also going to play like, you know, Kid Rock or 
Katy Perry or stuff like that. You know, we're trying to get into that as opposed to where we were with Cinder Road, where it would be disturbed. You limit yourself. Yeah, it's a lot more difficult. It would be disturbed and Seven Dust and, and Shine Down, which are all bands that we love, but we we you know we're able to hang in that crowd, but I think it's a lot more of a comfortable fit for me with the solo band in, in the hot AC world. Now, do you, with the solo album, just to give us a little taste, are there going to be some rockers on that, or is it more, yeah, definitely, or is it more definitely. in the vein of just all, like, too late? There are some rockers on there. It's not, it's not, it doesn't have the heavy stuff that uh, Cinderella's Damage Control record has with songs like Sex Addict and The Worst mm -hmm. Way and The Devil Made Me Do It, you know, which are certainly much heavier songs. Um, but the, I certainly haven't lost my edge. The, the solo record is definitely going to be, I would say, more in line with the Superhuman record than it is Damage Control. And I, and I was telling you off camera, I, I finally, after you were on our show, you, you were nice enough to give us um, the second album, which was Damage Control. You gave everybody mm -hmm. one of those, and I, yep. and I love that. And I was telling you the bar across the street had Superhuman in it. And I used to go like every night and play Get In, Get Out. Right. And finally, I. I took the plunge, <laughs> and I uh, I bought the CD, and it's and I and I love it. I love I can't get enough of that get in get out song. Thank and you. And if that bar was still around, I would still use my dollar, even though I own the song now, and play it because it's such a good song. Two things to say about that. <laughs> Number one, every bar I go into anywhere in the country, if there's a touch tunes, I will play my own music. Of I course. put the buck in and I play the song and then I'll go back to my seat and I'll act like nothing happened. And then when the song comes on, what? this is good. Have you heard? I'll ask the people next to me if they've heard it. And now they're like, no. And I'm like, no, you have, but it's, isn't it great? <laughs> That's like me. I go out to bars. I say, hey, you know, I'm on TV, but they don't believe it. <laughs> as long as you know, then you're yeah. good. Second thing is that uh, I, I you know, I love hearing my stuff live, so when it's at a bar, you're, you're, you're promoting more people, and, and you know, it's, it's always a great promotion tool to have more people hear your song. Maybe they look at the, the last five songs played, and they see Cinder Road or Mike Rocco, and they go, oh, that's, I really like that song. Let me, let me check that out. You know, and lastly, you know, Cinder Road uh, with Get In, Get Out was on a bunch of different compilation CDs, one of which being Strip Joints Volume 7 which is a compilation. I didn't know there was volumes one through six. I'll have to check that out. It's up to 20 some now. It's like 25 now. Oh, wow. It's basically, it goes to every strip club in the country. Oh, that's awesome. And Get In, Get Out was on there, which is exactly what I wrote the song for. Well, it's a great song. I mean, so if nothing happened after today, I, you're sitting with the guy that was on Strip Joints Volume 7 right now. I try to stay away from those places. Uh, that's a whole no, other. That's a whole other don't. show. That's a whole other show that Phil and I could talk about. But uh, you say you're doing these radio promos, are you, and, I'm, and I'm, you and I are Facebook friends, so it's official. It is official. We're in a relationship. <laughs> We're in a Facebook relationship. Our relationship so, status is it's complicated. I, I always, <laughs> I always see that you're playing out locally. Are you going to be doing any shows to, to, to promote this album locally? We're going to be doing a lot of shows. I mean, right now we're talking with the promoters up in Baltimore about doing a CD release party. Uh, I did two kind of, I wouldn't call them secret shows, but kind of under the radar shows. We did Noise in the Basement for, for a 98 Rock uh, a couple of months ago at the Baltimore Soundstage, downtown Baltimore. And then I played at Pedonia Station uh, up in Baltimore County, I think two weeks ago. Um, we're just doing just leaking these shows out to, to, to get the new solo band, uh, you know, rehearsed and, and up and running and people have really been digging it and uh, as soon as we get, you know, some official shows, I'll definitely send them down your way. I've been wanting to come up to one of your shows and I know you've invited us to a couple different Cinder Road shows and mm -hmm. I apologize I haven't been able to make it. Um, Phil's a bit of a diva and I don't drive, so, you know. It sounds like you're a diva. <laughs> So it's been kind of difficult, but I definitely want to come out. I don't drive and, either. And, Clearly, and I had my own dad drive me here. Don't say that. It's not years rock old. and roll, man. I, don't I'm say your dad roll. brought you. I'm hot AC now. Yeah. <laughs> Does this look like a rock and roll guy? Yeah, man. This is what this is the kind of picture you put on chick's walls, which is exactly what. Well, I this was is going to go up on my refrigerator. <laughs> I'd, ra I'd rather that, right? that than have it on your wall, your bedroom wall. <laughs> 
Can you tell us about what you're going to do about the video? What it's going to be like? We're going to have a, do you have a plot scripted yeah, out? Or? Yeah, I'm leaving Friday to film the video down in West Palm Beach. We have some great friends of ours uh, down that uh, that make movies, and you know they produce TV down in, in West Palm, and uh, they have a, a a production company down there called uh, Grand Cine Road Eight Entertainment. Um, they did a, a horror film actually called Beware that featured six Cinder Road songs uh, on it. Which really? Had, horror film called, I'm taking notes on yeah, this because yeah, I'm a huge uh, horror go film Go to fan. BewareTheMovie.com and uh, it was a, a great film that they did down in West Palm Beach. Has six of my songs on it, so obviously I'm a huge fan of it. Um, now, and, I, now I am. I'm, dude, I'm writing it down, it's, it's I'm got, taking notes. It hurts I'm, not lying. I'm telling you, first scene of this movie, the, the director and, and producer sent me the, the uh, uh, a couple of clips, like, because I, I was like, I, I, I've never seen my stuff in a movie. I want to see it. So That's the first cool, scene man. in, it's a guy and a girl uh, making out, and it turns into a topless scene with my song in the background. You That's can't awesome. beat that. That's awesome. You know. So these are the guys that are going to shoot your video. They're, yeah. So they're shooting the video, and uh, the, the concept is, is basically this: "Too Late" is a relationship song, but it can be taken in any way that you want to take it. In that. Uh, you know, it could be a relationship with a friend, it could be a, uh, you know, girlfriend relationship, it could be a wife, it could be a relationship with somebody at work, however you want to take it. But the, the bottom line is at the end of the day, the moral to the story is that it's not too late to, to make a change, to make things right, to, to move on, to do whatever you got to do. And uh, for the video uh, that we're going to be doing, uh, it starts out with me and, you know, my, my girlfriend uh, in good times. Uh, and it switches to me holding uh, a picture of the two of us from the top of our uh, balcony um, overlooking West Palm Beach. I accidentally drop the picture, signifying that the relationship has taken a, a turn, and I spend the majority of the video trying to find that picture and trying to find the girl. Uh, and at the end of the, the music video, I find the picture, and. When I look up, she's there. All is good. Happy ending. Now, did you come up with this concept, or concept, or did the Beware.com people come up with it? The Beware guys came up with it. They wrote the treatment for it. Um, my Sounds buddy cool. Sean Copenhaver wrote the treatment, and uh, cool. I'm super excited to do it. Now, with my schedule the way it is right now, and I'm pretty busy, um, I wouldn't be able to go to this shoot with you. But I'm going to offer you my services right now because I have studied acting. Okay. And if you ever need an extra, like a biker fat guy kills people's buzzes, I don't know, anything like that, and, and one of your videos. Bodyguard. Bodyguard, anything like that. Um, I'm, I'm making my services available to you now. Well, I say we just head down to West Palm now, <laughs> and we'll just party from now until uh, till Friday when we shoot. Speaking of which, um, you're getting ready to watch a video that unfortunately I'm not in, but Mike Rocco is. It's called Too Late. Here we are, falling apart at the seams All by myself and it kills me Being alone There she goes, finally we lost control Now all we have left is a picture of what we used to You can't say that I was wrong Tell me I'm to blame But I know that I am strong enough I know that I can change You can say all that you want You can say anything Just don't tell me Don't tell me it's too late Tell me that there's still a chance While every memory crashes Inside of my head Let me know If there's nothing left, let me go Give me a reason to see
Speaking of which, um, you're partying. I, you know, like I said, we're on Facebook, and I and I get so jealous because I always see that you're out in L.A. and I used to live in L.A. Right. And I, the one that drives me the craziest of your posts is, "Hey, I'm at the Rainbow tonight. Who wants to come?" And I'm like, "Oh, that's where I used to hang out when I was in L.A." Do you have any any good Rainbow bar and grill stories? The, one of my best memories of being at the Rainbow was um, right after we filmed the Get In Get Out video. We had just been signed to EMI. We were in the middle of touring with Daughtry. We filmed our very first music video in LA, and the, the label rep took us to the Rainbow. We all got hammered, and I just, there was nothing too rock star about it. It was just the fact that, you know, m my band guys and I, being teenagers on up, we had dreamed of, you know, ha getting a record deal and touring the world and making a music video, and here we were having done all those, and we're getting wasted at, at you know, the coolest bar on the Sunset Strip, you know, so it was kind of one of those special moments. When you were out in LA, you were working, right? Can you tell us who you were working for or what projects you were working on when you were out there? Let's see, the last time I was in LA, I wrote uh, one of the songs for my new record called Carry Me, and I was also finishing up uh, two songs that I co-wrote for the brand new Candlebox record that just came out. Is that the one with the uh, marquee on it? Yes. Uh, it's called Love Song, uh, Love Songs and Other Musings. So you wrote Love two Stories songs on and that? Other Musings, something like that. You wrote two songs on that? I co-wrote two, uh, Kevin, uh, Kevin Martin, the singer, and I wrote two songs for the record. The I'm first now going to pick that album up now. Youth and Revolt and Sweet Summertime, they're scheduled to be singles. Um, the second and third single off the record, so uh, Kevin and I wrote those songs. So I'm super proud about the fact that Candlebox did a couple songs that I wrote. So I love that first Candlebox album they did in the early 90s. It's great. We then, Cinder Road toured with them for a long time. and. Kevin has stayed a really, really close friend of mine. For and, a long that, time. and that, and I, and I haven't bought any of their albums since then because they kind of fell off the radar for me. But I did see that new album came out. Now that I know that you wrote two songs on, it, because I'm such a big fan of yours, I'm going to go ahead and uh, pick Thank that you. up. Thank you. Thank you. And uh, 18 cents in my pocket, baby. Check it out. No, I'll probably buy the CD, dude. That's even better. Isn't that that's like what 26 cents? Yeah. <laughs> I like buying CDs too. When the um, record came out, when the Candlebox record came out, I actually went to the store and bought it. Right. I and mean, I already had the music, but because I wanted to A, support them, right. B, I wanted to see my name in the liner notes of a Candlebox record, and yeah, see, I just pretty, wanted to have it. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Um, what else were you working on out there besides Candlebox and your solo stuff? Uh, I, I write with all kinds of different artists. I mean, a lot of it is songwriter buddies of mine and I getting together and writing songs to pitch two different artists. We'll start a song. and. I had a song that uh, Hailstorm cut, but it didn't wind up making the final, you know, bands like that will cut 50 right. songs and then 10 make it. They did cut a song of mine called After I'm Gone, and uh, when, it, when it didn't go on their album, I put it on my album. 
Now, do you still get paid to do that if they don't use it? Just, just so I can talk about the no. business side of music. No, I mean you. you you're hoping that they'll cut it so that you can make money off of okay, it. Okay, so the, the mere fact that you went there and worked on something for them, they don't pay you for your services. No, you got to get it on the album. Yeah, it, that's kind of like, you know, you, you you sacrifice and you go out there and you, you pay your dues as a songwriter and then once you get a hit, then all of a sudden the money will come in. Now, going back to Facebook and you, um, you're going to think I'm a big stalker, but uh, didn't, and correct me if I'm wrong, didn't CeCe DeVille from Poison make a comment to you about he really liked one of your albums? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you were really stoked about that? So I, I uh, last summer, I worked for Poison. But I, but I was right about that. CeCe DeVille yeah. actually said he, he really did dug one of your so albums. So I, I, I was out working for Poison, and uh, I really enjoyed their music when I was coming up as a kid and learning guitar, and I was always a big CeCe fan. So um, Pete Evick, local boy right. from here, from the band Evick and Brett Michaels band, he asked me to come out and work for Poison. Basically as uh, an entertainment director, if you will. Basically making sure the, the backstage was ready to go and I, I would escort VIP guests around if they had like another rock star come out or somebody famous, I'd hang out with them and make sure everything was cool and keep the guys entertained and keep the party good and going. So as I was doing that, you know, I was working, I didn't know how much, you know, I didn't talk much about my own bands or anything, I just kind of did my job and hung out and it was between, you know, tours and albums for Cinderella and for my own solo project. So um, one of the days, uh, actually long story, long, long story, uh, half short, uh, the bus driver for Cinderella for like a year and a half wound up being CeCe DeVille's bus driver, a great friend of mine named John Burke. and. He wound up telling CC that I was in a band called Cinder Road and, and whatnot, and uh, he, CC said, well, play me the record. And CC loved the record so much, he listened to it front to back about half a dozen times that night. Which one was it, the second Superhuman. one? Superhuman, it was the first okay. record. And uh, he came to me the next day, he said, Mike, 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 you didn't tell me you were a rock star. You know, <laughs> he's got this yeah. thick accent. And uh, he loved the record, and he said, in all seriousness, he said, um, your album is one of the best albums uh, from a new artist that I've ever heard. Oh yeah, it's great. And, and it can, was right from still, his mouth. And we can still get it, right? On yeah. Amazon you can, and all iTunes, uh, Amazon, uh, my website, cinderroadmusic.com or mikerocco.com. iTunes, the whole deal, just search Cinderroad. And you can get both Cinderroad records, Superhuman and Damage Control. You can get my solo single, Too Late, under my name, Mike Rocco. And you can still get the Plunge record, Hometown Hero. Oh, you can still get Plunge. Just on iTunes. That. It's only on iTunes. I think I looked for that and I couldn't find it. But I'm, you can find it on I'm, Amazon or eBay, but it's like a hundred bucks for the record. No, but I mean, I mean, I think I looked for it on iTunes, but I'm, I'm it's terrible. Only, I mean, technology frightens and confuses me. It happens. happens. But uh, I'd love, I'd love to check out that uh, that Plunge album. Yeah, it was fun. I, mean, I made it right down the street in uh, Haymarket, Virginia. Oh, cool. I recorded it. So, so CC said he liked the album and uh, listened to it the rest of the tour. He loved it, and as soon as he finished that record, he was playing that front to back. I mean, my driver buddy was telling me, he's like, dude, CeCe's been listening to this record nonstop. That's cool. And then uh, a few days later, uh, later, I gave CeCe Damage Control, which he loved as well, and wore that record out. So uh, it's huge for me to have CeCe uh, not only compliment my record, but become a, a good buddy of mine. I still, so I still talk to him. Any writing, you think you'd do any writing with him in the future? Or? We talked about it. We talked about it. We definitely plan on doing some writing together. Cool, cool. Actually, I tried to get that worked out last time I was in LA, but unfortunately, we couldn't get our schedules to lock up, but we will definitely get that done. Well, it looks like we're, we're coming down to the end here. Um, have I touched on everything? Is there anything you want to talk about that I haven't talked about with you yet? Well, I need everybody and their brother and mother to go out and get this single. This is, this is my new solo project under my name, Mike Rocco. I know it's spelled weird, but it's R-U-O-C-C-O. -C -C the song is Too Late. The album's called The Rise of the Ride the Risk. It's at radio right now. You've got Virginia's best TV host, <laughs> Dave Bain, right yeah, there Yeah, I like it, me. so. But Fill in the booth. Mike Rocco. Can I ask you a, like a geek type question about the single? Something that I noticed. Why not? Um, the drumming, was that, uh, was that loops? Was that tracking? It wasn't really a drummer, did, right? Well, it, it, it is a drummer. The demo that we originally did was not a drummer. However, when we re-recorded it for the album, we'd use like basically this, this Led Zeppelin looking kit. It was just a kick and a snare drum to create that loop effect. 
and That's just what I heard. So I was right weird. About that. There's oh, a yeah. loop effect. It okay. is a loop effect for sure. And then when the choruses come in, it's the full, full on drums. Okay. But uh, yeah, that was part of. With but you used solo. a real drummer. That's what I was trying to figure yes. out. I mean, oh I, yeah. I, I'm not really a musician, but I can hear some things. No, we did. Out. We did use a real drummer. And one of the things that I was really conscious of trying to do with my solo record is trying to modernize the production and do something really cutting edge. You know, involves some I think aspects. that gives it the modern sound. Yeah, exactly. The, the loops, yeah. Gives it the modern sound. I wanted to do the loops and some of the dance type beats. I wanted to keep the songs up tempo. I wanted to introduce some keyboard aspects, you know, different effects flying around, which we did. And, uh, you know, I think people are really going to like it. I think it's the most modern thing I've ever done. And I'm really proud of the record. And, and uh, I, uh, I hope that a year from now we're we're sitting backstage at uh, Jiffy Lube Live, you know, before my uh, my big tour. Well, everybody knows how I love to be backstage, but that's right. <laughs> and in the front that's, that's, row. That's, and in the front row. Maybe we should change the name to backstage because I do have a, a lot of fun, as people who have been on my show know, backstage. One more thing I want to ask you about the single. What is the difference? We got two tracks on here mm -hmm. on the CD version. One's vocal up. One's album version. Can you tell us quickly what the difference is? The album version is obviously the version that'll be on the album, and it, uh, the vocal up version is just simply a mix that the vocal is louder. With Hot AC Radio, um, a lot of times they'll bump the lead vocal up, you know, as opposed to if we're a rock band, the, the vocal will be down a little lower mm -hmm. in the mix. So the album version is kind of the rock mix, and the vocal up version is more the Hot AC mix. Okay. Same what, song. What, what version do I have if I got it off iTunes? Uh, album version. Okay. The rock version. Well, Mike, I can't thank you enough for coming back on my show. It's always great to my see you. My pleasure. Like I said, I'm sorry I haven't been out to see you. I will try to make it out on this tour. I'll keep inviting you guys. Um, you need another co-host here too, another female co-host. Come on, man. I'm not enough. No, you're awesome. <laughs> it was just nice to be able to. No, I'm just kidding. But uh, if you get the chance, go out and pick this up. iTunes. Look for the album. Um, I've already checked it out. I've checked out Mike's earlier stuff. Um, he's a great guy, and this is the new grown-up, more modern uh, version of Mike Rocco. I'm Dave Bain, you're watching The Front Row, and thanks again for being on, Mike. Thank you. See you soon. You can say all the It's not too late